you'll notice snow. Here, I'll get a little further back. Snow on the top of the bin, snow on the top of the bin, snow. Snow sliding off. So I plugged the monitors in. I was planning on plugging it in today anyways. We're at 40, we're at the very top. Um, it went up from about 24 at the top, something like that. I checked these bins early January. I was down here, that was when I was doing the the conveyor upgrade. I came and I checked these bins. They were good. That would have been about seven weeks ago. Well, we got a big problem. There's probably a hundred bushel on top here that's fully cooked. It looks like it was leaking down from this guy. And just got wet. So I got a shovel. It's not far down. Well, at least over here it's not. We'll see how it goes over here. <laughs> this is not a good situation. Oh. Ow. My hair's froze. Um. Got about, I'm going to call that about 250 bushel. I think we're around the halfway point, maybe just a hair under. I haven't been counting bucketfuls. The five gallon pail seems to work really good. I'm going to haul another one because I'm kind of at the point where I'm getting down the slopes a bit. So I'll do two at once. That should speed things up a bit. But uh, I need some water. I'm cramping up. It's warm in there. It's like 40 degrees at the top. My forearm keeps cramping up. Won't be hauling today. So I'm going to fire this guy up, plug it in, put the tarp on. And uh, we'll see. I, I don't think... Uh, well, it's the way it looked. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, the top ones, top two are above 40. Well, we got a little rehydrated and washed up. Uh, cleaned up. Uh, it's supposed to get wicked cold tonight. I left the bin cracked. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get out there tomorrow to deal with it. Hopefully... I can't imagine it getting really any worse that fast, but I couldn't imagine it in the first place. And then I just got to start turning. Get her cooled down, get her blended off. Hopefully there's no hot spots or spoiled spots part way down. I, I don't think there is. The bin was never hot to begin with. The grain going in there was dry as could be. I'm just shocked that it turned at all. So, to be continued. I've developed... <clears throat> that's not good. <clears throat> Eat a grain's brutal on the lungs. I'll know because I'll have... I was in there with a mask the whole time, but that's not to say something didn't get through. All right, sir. When I got here yesterday, I'd already paled out, I don't know, 250-ish, 200 bushels thinking that I had another 250 to 300 to go. Uh, yesterday was a lot colder, but it was like, I wouldn't say perfect, but it was good to be in the top of the bin with that cool air. Kept it reasonable, I was sweating pretty good. So I took off my jacket inside the bin. When I got done, I went to go looking around, or I went to go film. I couldn't find this phone anywhere. Oh crap. I I either lost it into the canola and like I've I'm probably a, a minimum of like six videos behind. So like you're seeing this now, it was probably filmed six weeks, seven weeks ago. Anyways, I uh started digging around, couldn't find it. 
thinking maybe I paled it out into the pile over there. Dead. Dead. I figured it wouldn't have been very far down because, well, anyway, I did, I did a little bit of kicking around. Nope. Went back in the bin, paled some more out just to be safe. Still didn't find it. I said, oh, damn. Well, I'll get into my truck, get on the way home. And uh, I happened to look down between the seat and it had fallen in there. So when I got out to have a Gatorade, I must have dropped it there. So, recapping. So I paled all of that off the top of the bin. I figure there's about 400 bushel. It's flat, but it's wide around, three, 400. So it's not as bad as I initially thought. And then I pulled a load, not a full load. There's probably about 500, 550 on that guy. And I figured that's probably enough that it's getting to the point where the top's gonna start coming in. So, this morning, I got the semi. This is the first load. We're gonna keep pulling and it does seem to be flowing decent from the top and it is blending off a bit so it's not coming out at 40 45 degrees we're gonna load this up we're gonna do two loads we're gonna take it up to dad's we have an empty bin up there empty hopper bottom that's got air we'll put it on there for a couple of days cool it down we'll see what the bin looks like here once it's cool up there if I still think I need to pull more out of this bin, I'm gonna put it in there. I'm gonna haul it back down here. We'll put it in this bin, which is a 3300. I should have, I'm thinking 24, 2500. And then I can also put that in there. And if I need to pull out more, I, I can deal with that. that I did sure worked well. We got things moved for now. Uh, I got the the heat map going right now. At the very bottom, 15 degrees. The next sensor up, six and a half, eight, and 11. And then you can see that the top two sensors are in the air because it's like zero and half a degree. Like aside from the very top of the pile most of it's just trash so I think instead of it's instead of trying to salvage it and run it through the grain vac and I want to fire this puppy up you see that vein is full of ice holy shit did that make a racket so I gotta figure out a way to strap my little heater around this for a bit. I was hoping to run it this afternoon. Shouldn't take long, but just gotta find a ratchet strap and something to tie the tarp to while I'm still loading. Kinda hokey, but hopefully it works. Looks like all the ice is off, hopefully. All right, we got that put away. Let's see how she sounds this time. Oh. That is so much better. It sounded like a busted air compressor before. And uh, was just vibrating like a son of a bitch. So. We'll leave that for a day or so. Good cold air won't take long to cool that much down. All right, I have adapted my theory. Should, adapt is not the right word. Revised. I have revised my theory as to what happened and why this bin got warm. 
So, if we look at the bin, right there, that is a west-facing bin with a west-facing lid. Now, I left everything open today. Well, for the last couple of days, I just climbed up and closed it. So, I undid the, the rope for the, the fill cap. And then I climbed around, I climbed up, and I put the, the inspection hatch cover on. And I noticed that the, the bin lid was just cracked a tiny bit. Like, not much, half an inch. And I said, well, that's kind of weird. And the other thing I kind of noticed is like, it didn't slap down really hard when I undid the, um, the rope. So I climbed up on top and there was a big old chunk of like a branch, probably the size of that little tree. Well, you probably can't see it really well right there, but like a big friggin' branch off of one of those maples was tangled up and kind of hanging on the back slope. And so what I'm thinking is that had kind of some weight to it, whether it got covered in ice or, or if it was just enough to catch the wind in January, there were some real nasty windy days during that cold snap, and there was some snow as well. And what I'm thinking, west wind pushed that branch over the back a bit, popped the lid, probably yay much, and it blew a bunch of snow in the top. And then the following week, or I guess it was about a eight, nine day cold snap, and then four or five days after that it was in the positives everything melted on top and then everything spoiled or everything heated on top and then spoiled so that's my new working theory of what happened there So I kind of made the executive decision that instead of putting it over, initially I was thinking I'd just dump it in the bush there and let the, the deer and moose have at it. I kind of decided I'm going to scatter it over this slough. Um, it's a, this field is going to be canola anyways, so that doesn't matter too much wind's the right direction for getting things cleared away from me but <clears throat> this slough in an average year we seed it and then it gets drowned out in a wet year we don't get to seed it at all in a dry year it's really damn good so my thought process here is what little is actually going to be viable seed? Like, we're probably talking 5% of whatever I put down is going to be viable seed. Not that it matters, because, like, this field is 125 acres. I, I would need, well, 12 and a half bags of canola, so 600 pounds. That's, sorry, that's not right, is it? 40? Yeah. That's all I would need. Like, one bucket of good canola would be enough to seed the entire field. But, you know, we're just going to put it there. If it spoils, it's already spoiled. If it germinates, hey, there, you know, it might turn into something if, if we start wet and it kind of manages to pull through. And uh, if it germinates early because it's dry and there was enough moisture in that slough, well, it's going to get hit with glyphosate killed off anyways at the beginning to make room for the certified canola, like the hybrid canola. 